Hey, hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over long term thinking again. But in this video, we're going to be checking out what type of decision making companies that have lasted hundreds of years have made during economic downturns, and what you can learn from this to implement into your company right now. So we'll be taking a look at some of these massive companies over here. What I checked out in a previous video is long established companies here, IBM, Ford, PepsiCo, Coca Cola, GE, Nestle, HSBC, Bayer, Siemens, JP Morgan Chase, right? This is like JP Morgan Chase, we want to take a look at these companies because they've been around for so long, they've gone through so many different things that have happened, many black swan, uh, maybe long long term uh, events, right, that that happen, maybe economic downturns, maybe it's issues within the company, right? Maybe it's changes of leadership. So we want to look at these and understand what can we what what lessons can we take away? So during downturns, there's a couple of things that that are really important. So the first lesson is PMF. So if you're a SaaS founder, of course, you've heard about finding PMF, you know, you have to figure out your product market fit in order to actually sell your product, right? But a lot of people and what they don't talk about is that once you start finding your product market fit, it's it doesn't stop, right? Once you start selling product and pushing product, it doesn't mean you're over, right? In order to stay competitive in a world in which AI and other things like that are constantly changing the landscape of software and sales, you need to be constantly reevaluating, rerunning that function to understand what things actually drive consumers to buy your product rather than going to other people, etc. Right? So we need to continuously evolve with trends. Now, what does this mean? It means you as a business leader need to be constantly checking in, getting a pulse of the market. So this might be talking with customers, doing customer support calls from time to time, checking out with your customer support team, understanding what they're seeing, looking at feature requests, seeing what you're not doing right now, weighing what what other things that competitors are doing and if this makes sense for you to go in or potentially acquire other companies that are doing this, right? So secondly here, we need to talk about multiple assets and risk mitigation, right? So if you have one product, which is driving sales for your company. This means you're quite reliant on one way of acquiring customers because they care about one particular problem or thing that your that your product solves in their cust in the, in their company, right? So what you want to do in in a downturn or a recession, having multiple products that solve different aspects of problems in other businesses will help you to mitigate risk in case one part is no longer as valued, right? Think about Google, they were a search engine for a long time. Now they have Google Calendar, they're in the email space, they have, uh, now they're moving into the AI space to continue to be competitive, right? They didn't just stop with a search engine. Let's also talk about innovation. So in downturns, another thing that can be really valuable is making sure that you have a stockpile of innovation ready to go when the economy gets a bit better and you can put the money back towards launch and doing advertising the marketing campaigns. This is a really untalked about thing, especially for companies that do have a little bit more funds and are financially in a better place, right? Because not everyone can just put a lot of money into innovation, but this is something that you should continue to do, continue to reform and you know look at the way that your company is working and try and figure out ways of dedicating capital to creating new products that you can then launch in the future. Now, Germany here did something very interesting during the 2008 financial crisis. And unlike the US, in which case they fired and restructured most of their company, they did something a little different. Now in Germany, they realized, okay, we took the time to hire these people, we put them through the, the ringer, just making sure that they can work with us. Because in Europe, hiring is a bit different than the States, when you hire an employee, they end up staying along with your company for a much longer time. And there is a lot longer time frame since when you from the time you fire them until they actually leave, right? I believe it's three to six months, um, where once you give in your, your notice, you literally stay with the company and continue to receive pay. As, as an employee, right? So you really have the, it's more on the side of the employees that they get a lot more benefit rather than the employer, right? So employers have to make really good decisions when it comes to hiring or else they might have someone stuck in their company for a long time that isn't going to be pulling their weight, right? So what they realized, um, the smart Germans were able to maintain the employment of their, of their staff, 
right? And the way that they did this is they said, hey, we'll bring you down to half time or even quarter time in this time period instead of firing them and saying, hey, we will bring you back when we have the funds, when we're able to do this because it's so expensive. Think about it. One of the most expensive things is, is finding new, good, qualified talent that understands your product and market and training them up, right? Once you find the talent, which is hard enough, you then spend all of your time training them. This way, you don't have to work and train them multiple times. You've actually already got the talent with you and you're able to then use them once again when the when the economy allows for that, right? Now, alternatively, in the States here, you saw companies restructuring like crazy. There were lots of layoffs during the 2008 financial crisis. I'm just using this as one example. You can look back to the Great Depression as well. Lots of restructuring happened. A lot of people losing their jobs. This is a short-term solution, right? You do get the benefit of not having the payroll overheads that you would have. You're able to extend your runway by a lot, but you know these are not neither of these is an optimal solution it's better if you're looking at risk mitigation innovation and uh, evolving with trends right now budgeting here charlie munger uh, just passed away recently and i think one of the biggest things that we can learn from his legacy is go back to the basics right he he, he was notorious for being able to identify and sort of simplify things if if a deal was too complicated he would just say too hard and then he would move on because he realized that he could spend his time trying to make a complex thing work, but it's much easier to just say, no, I don't have to take this on. There are other better deals that will come his way. And the other thing from Charlie is about budgeting, which is don't spend more than you have, right? Don't get unnecessary debt for your business and don't take that on your shoulders, right? So in an economic downturn, if you're not spending more than you're earning, then you're fine, right? If you think about it in a very, very basic sense, this is incredibly important, right? You don't even need to have that much savings as a company because if you're still having money left over at the end of the month, you're fine, right? So finally here, strategic acquisitions, discounts, right? So JP Morgan, if we look over here, crazy long time frame here. I believe they were founded sometime in the 1700s, if I'm not mistaken. Now, JP Morgan acquired Bear Stearns um, and Washington Mutual during the 2008 financial crisis, and it expanded its footprint by doing so, right? Because at this point, these are companies that are literally about to go out of business, and they're able to buy them at a massive discount. So if you have funds available, this is something that can set you up for a really, really strong time period after the recession, right? Lastly, over here, and I'll put this one as leadership, Great leaders during a downturn can really, really help your company sustain itself, right? So if you're the leader, if you're the CEO, or if you're in charge of, you know, operations, whatever it is, as long as your leadership team can be cool and collected during this time, you have a much higher chance of surviving difficult time periods, right? Because a good leader can rally the team together and not only that, but can continue to spin the narrative of we are growing over time you know, and we are going in a certain direction, we are trying to achieve our mission. And if people can really rally behind that leader during the downturns as well, they will be much stronger and cohesive when the time comes when things are going okay for the company again. So I hope this is helpful to you to go through all these different things for what I recommend. And, and when we're not in a downturn, right, it looks like we're coming out of this SaaS recession. I recommend continuously finding your product market fit, doing this research, evolving with the trends, continuing to focus on innovation, and the other thing that you can do, right, we're not even in a downturn, right? If, if you're not in a downturn, right, leadership and, uh, and budgeting. These are things that you don't even have to wait for. So I'm just going to quickly highlight these just so that you have this and that you understand here. These are things you can be doing, you know, all the time. I guess innovation as well, right? So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about the same tactics and strategies that we are using to scale multiple SaaS companies past the 500K per month mark, then go ahead and check out the two and a half hour um, webinar in the description below. We go through the frameworks, the scripts, the models, the softwares, everything that we use to scale companies below with Cyrusscape. So that's it. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed, drop a like, comment, and sub subscribe. I'm interested to hear what tactics you all are using and have used in the last couple of years here. All right, that's it. See you later. Bye-bye.